All right, guys, thank you for joining me on this lovely evening at 8.34 right now. This is our coaching call once again, and it's a little bit different because normally I, I get on these coaching calls and my topics are very much something that I've been through and experienced and I've, you know, done a lot of work with or, or gone a lot, gone through a lot to experience what the topic is. And tonight I'm just going to come out and tell it I haven't done this a lot. Um, and it's all about journal writing. And I, honestly, it's, it's kind of funny. Allison sent me a message saying, well, the Fit 500, we got another idea. What's it? What do you think of this? Journal writing, all that kind of stuff. And we had a little bit of touch. We touched on it a little bit, but then it really came out because I started reading this book and it's on Audible. So I'll pull it up here, the exact title. So it's the 15 um, Secrets Successful People Know About Time Management. Okay, so it's 15 chapters. Each chapter is a secret and it kind of goes off and talks about all the different ways that um, you can become more successful. And it's funny, one of them was get yourself off a whole bunch of email lists and get yourself off of all these distractions. And I'm, and I'm telling you this story because I went to the, uh, was it Elderton Fall Fair? And we're going through like the vendors and this guy kept insistently he handed my son a business card and, and I said, Oh, a business card. He goes, no, it's not. But can I get your email? Like he went right for it. I, I said, no. And, and he goes, well, on and on, on about these windows and blah, blah. And I said, emails are very distracting, but I will call you because the book told me that emails are distracting. So I was trying to deploy it. And it was just funny that it came to the very next chapter after emails, it talks about journaling and writing down, um, things that you've thought about throughout your day, writing down um, sayings that you've seen, writing down things that you've told people that you have to do, or you've made promises, writing down how you feel, writing. Honestly, it's a big book of different thoughts, and it can be anywhere mishmashed on the page. It's just you getting things out there, writing down your goals, writing down whatever it takes so that you can go back and reflect on it. And then Allison sends me that message and says, oh, I think we should do this challenge. And I said, you know what, I'm all for it because it's obviously happening for a reason because that's what I was gonna say. And she had said it. So you saw the post tag and that's probably why some of you are on this call tonight because you saw the link and all that good stuff. But yeah, it's something that I haven't really done a lot of like yes i've written stuff down i've written my goals down i got my goal sheet is right here right like they're written i got it going on i got a number 38 countdown of 40 for my workouts that i set on here um meal prep more often i cook chicken today coach more online clients well it's starting to happen deadlift 300 pounds well i did 135 so we're getting there um but like i've never truly just sat down with a book and they say in, in the book, like the one I'm reading, to get a leather bound book because it's just cooler and you won't forget it and all this other stuff. And there's tips that I'll share at the end of the call about what to do with the book. Um, but yeah, it's like this really cool idea that there's no rules to the journal. There's no like point number one, point number two, and there's no direction you have to write on the sheet. There's no right to left, left to right, any of that kind of stuff. And I'm sure for certain people that might cause some trouble but honestly I think it's just great to get ideas down it's great um, to, to be able to express yourself to yourself and they say talking to someone is is therapeutic well I think journal writing is too and just from what I've researched and learned and, and that kind of stuff and listened to so I'm just gonna share my screen and it's gonna talk about some cool points that I found on this topic so let's go here. Here it is. So it's eight reasons why, uh, eight reasons keeping a journal can help you reach your goals. Um, and I truly like the title of this website, you know, Becoming Minimalist. It's, it's very hard to do. Um, we get attracted to many, many, many things. And we realize afterwards that we probably don't need any of those things because they just sit on a shelf and they never get used. Like I have this awesome 4K video camera. I was going to be a sweet videographer and I think we only made one video testing it while walking around the neighborhood one day. So 
case in point, becoming a minimalist, it's probably a good thing. Anyways, always carry a notebook. And I mean, always the short term memory only retains information for three minutes, unless it's committed to paper, you can lose an idea forever. It's a really cool quote. And I love how this starts with that. And when I read this, I was like, yeah, this is the one I want to talk about because it's so true. And anybody that faces short term memory loss or has any issues or like, how important is it for you? You already know. I know Allison writes a lot of stuff down or else she'll forget it. It's super important. You can have the greatest idea and then you're going to go talk to that person that you think could help you execute that idea and it's going to come out like a piece of poop and you won't remember the idea because you haven't written it down. Normally I swear there, but I, I, re I refrain. Anyways, let's move on to the benefits. Number one, keeping a journal requires us to write out our goals. The importance of keep committing our desires to paper cannot be overstated. It is a simple process, but it pays great dividends. Writing out our goals provides the opportunity to articulate them clearly and makes their achievement appear closer. Okay, it's so true. I see this and now I'm just moving towards them, right? It's written down. That's just on a sheet. It's loose. You can lose it. It's not ideal. So that was step one. Step two would be to actually put it in a book that's very noticeable. That's why I say leather bounded or something, not just a notebook, not just, you know, white line, like white paper with the lines, none of that kind of, it has to have some significance to you. You like it. There's different designs. Maybe it has an animal on it. You like anything that reminds yourself of, of yourself so that it can be part of you. Okay, number two, a journal serves as the permanent record of our progress. Very simple. Success can be quickly forgotten, right? And when it is, it becomes easy to get frustrated with our pursuit. This is huge, especially in what I'm doing with my business and that kind of stuff. If I haven't taken time to look back at where I've come from, I feel today in this very seat that I feel defeated because is a very expensive week because it's year end and it's a very, like you see things going in, going out and you just think, how am I ever going to do this next year? But if you look back and you've made it this far, if you never reflect, you'll never be able to know that where you're going, the direction that you're going forward progresses based on what you truly want. And if you're here in the seat right now and you've come from so far and you see this in this book, you can, have confidence in, in yourself. You can have confidence in the people that have been around you. Maybe the people are even in your journal that you've written about. Like this is your journal. You don't have to show it to anyone, but it can show you a guide to your future based on the path that you've traveled, knowing that your trajectory is gonna be zigzag, but more than likely, if you have a positive mindset around it, your trajectory is going to be zigzagging up. There's nothing that is just on a straight line nothing. So just understand that. So when you write in your journal and you look back and reflect, it will come to be very useful to you going forward. All right. Number three, writing requires us to think through the whys and the hows. This is really cool. So this happens um, pretty much every week. Allison and I, we get together, we do our meeting. There's a book, like there's a, an agenda and we write it down and then we go through the whys and hows. How's this gonna happen? What's it gonna look like? Why are we doing it? We, we ask us, ask each other these questions. Like, what is it for? And this is all because it gets written down. If we both had ideas and we just come to the table with ideas, start talking, we would never go through this because there's no direction. There's no specifics, there's no focus. There's no, your attention isn't driven to certain things. It's just up in the air, things are flying. And you can't grab any of them because you don't actually have a plan or you don't have any structure. Okay. There's no discipline um, within that structure. So writing this stuff down makes a huge difference because you can go back to it and reference it. And whether you put tabs with dates on it or figure out how you can just easily reference back to a sheet, obviously you're going to write it in chronological order because it's impossible not to unless you flip pages. I don't know who would do that, but make sure that when you do that, start going through the hows and whys. If you have an idea, put some, put some hows and whys below it, right? And then you can easily take them out. All that doesn't work, this and that. So you can easily remove them, that kind of thing, or scratch them out. Uh, number four, a journal proves we have solved problems in the past. This is a good one. So I'm going to read the blurb on it. Whether we are chasing a physical goal, a career goal, 
or a personal goal. Not every step in our pursuit, pursuit is going to be easy. Goals are worth pursuing, never are. At some point, we'll be required to overcome adversity, but we will. And the next time we face it, we'll find motivation and strength in our written record of overcoming it in the past. We can remember to the most recent um, problem that we've solved and overcome, but we can't remember every detail of our greatest accomplishment in life. We can't remember every detail of when we were 15 years old and we aced the test that we never thought. We can't remember those things because we never wrote them down. So just understand that only the most recent accomplishments are going to truly stick deep inside of you that you can actually recall most of the details, but you will, you'll forget how you feel, like how you felt during that moment. You'll forget little details that could be like absolutely what it says, could be the most motivating uh, and, and providing us strength to continue going forward and to stay disciplined. We often forget about what we've accomplished when we're standing here today, looking at looking in the face of adversity, thinking, how am I going to do this? But yet, we did it in a different way, to the same magnitude or the same, same adversity level, and we accomplished that. But if we don't write it down, we have nothing to reflect upon. Like I think it's really cool with us doing these videos because I can go back to the very first call that I did. It's a digital journal of the coaching calls. It's a, it, for me, it's a digital journal of the growth that I've experienced in my own life to be able to get to this and sit in front of you guys and to be able to talk about these things. So I, I think this one is, is really powerful in the fact that if you write detailed journal notes, you can go back and truly become better going forward. All right. Keeping a journal naturally reminds us to articulate the next steps. That's very simple. I'm not going to dwell on this one too much. You write today, you're going to push tomorrow. You write tomorrow, you're going to push the next day. It's just, it's what it does. It forces you to do that. And it's, it's a great, great thing from something so simple. Number six here, writing reminds us to think beyond the obvious. So always looking for material to journal has caused me to see the value of simplicity and minimalism in areas I would not, not normally have seen it. Whether it be an article in the newspaper or advertisement on television or a conversation with a friend, likewise, writing causes us to become more intentional in any pursuit and to find inspiration beyond the obvious places right in front of us. So that one's pretty cool. Just gets you to be more aware. Um, it, you can write down your goals, you can look at it, you can think of ways, like it just all the first five things, everything that journal writing does just becomes, you become more aware of everything, right? And then I think I touched this uh, on this a little bit earlier, but about it being private. Um, even a private journal provides accountability. I think it's great to tell somebody what you're doing, but I think deep down inside, if it's something you truly want and you tell yourself that and you write it down, your best accountability partner is yourself. It's the things that you, you live for. It's trying to find who you are, your purpose, what is your goal in life? All those kind of things end up really, I feel like if I started writing in a journal, I kept it to myself. I would share some things that no one else should read. Right. And it's just, it's meant for me and it'll drive me further. So I, I really like about the accountability thing. I'm always a big per person to push accountability, share your goals publicly, have a friend, a buddy system that can keep pushing you, send you messages, stuff like that. I like all that stuff. This is just another um, avenue that you can take to up that accountability in your life. So I think it's really good. Um, number eight, a written account allows our story to inspire others. So this is pretty cool. If, if you think about why you're truly here, um, everyone's going to have something a little bit different, but it always brings me to legacy, what you want to leave behind. I think once we go and maybe if we have these journals, cause I know now, um, in reading my book, they talk about all these famous people that had journals and we're all reading those journals. Now the whole world gets to see these journals, even though that person has passed, it doesn't necessarily matter anymore unless Obviously, if there's family that says no, but if they're open, we're all reading them. So I think that's a really cool thing to be able to pass on and to inspire the people that are coming next in line. Um, your legacy, what's left for your kids, any of your friends, 
any of your students, whatever it may, whoever it may be, I think we almost have an obligation to do this. Because I know like growing up and, and now getting to the point where I am, I'm searching and starting to find different people that are reaching out to me and they could be mentors and stuff like that. And I see what they're doing. I see they're opening up their time in their day or, or for me. And I think this is another way to do that for the people behind us or even the people around us. It's like you're, you're passing on your knowledge and what you've found out or what you figured out in life, just in case that can be experienced by someone else and maybe it will help them get through it. So I think it's really cool um, having that and, and being able to inspire someone. Um, we see it all the time in the gym. You see people doing transformations and stuff like that and telling their story and why they're, what the reason why is. And it's very inspiring to hear those stories. Um, it's just, there's nothing better that I think there's no better feeling than inspiring someone or someone telling you that you've inspired them. So keep that one in mind when you are writing this stuff. Don't make it glamorous. Don't make it fancy. But if for one day it gets shared, just know that that story is probably going to touch someone has to. There's so many people in the world that would resonate with the stuff that we're doing now. Um, you don't know who yet, maybe, but there will be. We all just experience the same things in different ways. So uh, it can be relatable. Anyways, I'm going to stop sharing there and just come back to it. So I don't know. I'm going to, Allison, can I pull you on for a second? Yeah, there we go. Hi. Hi. Can you just talk to me about the importance of you writing the stuff down for yourself? Like, I don't know if you keep a journal, but I, I know do. you do. I do. It's funny. Um, my journal tends to be more um, like doodling and drawing and things like that, where my day-to-day -day life is lists. Like I write everything out. Like you commented about agendas for meetings. I always do that. I have post-it notes all over the house with things I write down as reminders to myself and everything, but my journal tends to be where I can get a little bit creative and just let things flow. It's, I think that's exactly kind of the point to journal writing and even those eight tips there, um, it helps people open up to themselves. Because mm -hmm. if I sat here, and I'm going to be quite honest with everyone here, if I sat here and talked to myself, I might feel I'm going a little crazy. I just talk to myself and no, no one talk back. So I find like when you write stuff down and you have thoughts about them and yes, they may be on your own or by yourself or whatever, it almost feels like a conversation going back and forth with your idea. And that feels more human to me. That feels more real to me than trying to like sit here and be like, well, I really want to get to this. I want to get to that. Uh, I have this goal. And you just hear nothing. I think it becomes alive. It becomes real when it's on paper, even more so, so that you can have these ideas bounce back and forth with yourself. And then if it's something that's shareable, then you would go and verbalize that to someone. Mm -hmm. So I don't I know. Think a lot of what my journal is too. Like I, I reflect on my day. So sometimes it's just like doodling and like talking about my day. But then it's also about like planning where I want to be. So I think it's like a lot of arrows and like drawing things. And I'm in that way. See, I think that's exactly what it's supposed to be yeah so that's pretty cool that you already do it and rated out of 10 important not important to your life has it have you reflected it's funny that you say that because i was cleaning up a little bit today and i found a journal from last year and it was funny to look back <laughs> at where i was and where um i was hoping to go and things i had accomplished and things i wanted to do and just it was good because it was good to just see where things have gone some things um, we did make happen and some things I, I put on pause. So now they're coming back again. Now those things that are on pause, are they like, are they worth pursuing? Yes, I still think so. Yeah. And was it timing that they went on pause or yeah, exactly. so you, other things came up, right? So, right. You were before your, your idea came before it's time. Yep, exactly. It's interesting how it kind of starts falling into place. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Um, I don't know if anybody else on here keeps a journal. If you do, you want to unmute yourself and talk about it? You got five seconds to unmute yourself. Three, two, one. Perfect. So that's my next thing. I want to challenge you guys to actually do this. So 
I don't know if I still have the window open. Here we go. Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm going to share and give you guys some tips on what to get. So let's do a little shopping. Amazon. Here we go. Journals. All right, this is pretty cool. This one right in the center here, this black one, it's a composition notebook. That is a no, not that one. Okay, this one beside it, it's a sketchbook. That's a no. These classic line notebooks, they're okay, but I would probably say no to that. This is, this is for me. Like, look at this one, handmade leather journal. I would say no to that because 25 bucks and you don't really need that. But this one over here, it's 15 bucks, it's pretty cool. Uh, there's also another one down here that I, I saw. This one is, where'd it go? This one here. This is a five-year journal. For the dollar value, that's impressive. You know, five-year journal. I don't know if it's five years worth of pages, but the pages are probably pretty small. So just watch out for that stuff when you're buying it. But I would recommend something that you can keep. Like if someone likes elephants, look at that, dingbats. A little bit, little bit of money, but whatever. It's one of those things. You can personalize this. And the reason why I want you guys to do it is because it becomes meaningful to you. And then maybe you'll write in it more. It'll be a reminder that this is something that you want to write in. One with a heart on it. That looks like a book that was recovered from, I don't know, scripture or something. But anyways, there's lots and lots of different kinds. And it needs to be meaningful and stand out so that you can see it, read it, and keep it with you at all times. So that's the other tip. The other one that I want you to do is on the inside of your cover or something, you need to put like a business card attached to it or some reference to how someone can return it to you. Because if you ever lost this journal, it needs to be recovered. So when people see it, you have to put a heartfelt message inside, something that stays there, just says, if found, it's really, really, really important to me. I appreciate if you've read it and shared some of the great ideas, but please send it back to me, right? With a return address, you'll promise them, you'll pay them, whatever it may be, you need to keep this. So that's something that I recommend that you put on the inside, just a little message to whoever, just in case. It's like an insurance policy for your book. These are your thoughts, remember? These are your ideas, these are your dreams, your goals, these are very personal things sometimes. So hopefully the person respects that and sends it back. So it's just the thing that you wanna put in there in case you lose it. Other than that, it's open to just whatever you feel. I personally like this one in here. I like that one. It's hard cover. It'll, it'll be durable, it's 200 pages. Um, it might last the whole year if I do it every day. It probably will, just I'm gonna ease into this one. But it's one of those things, guys. Anyways, that's a little shopping. They're pretty cheap. Amazon Prime gets it to you pretty much the next day, which is awesome. So we're gonna stop sharing. But that's it guys. I haven't experienced this in depth. Allison has more experience, so reach out to her if you have any questions. But honestly, this is your own thing. There's no answer to how to do it. There's no, you know, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no formula. There's nothing that anybody can tell you what to do for yourself. So be, just do it. Just be personal. Take it on yourself. Write whatever you want in it. Share it if you want to. Don't, you don't have to. It's one of those things. I'm going to try it. So thank you. Appreciate the call. Appreciate the time that you guys take out of your week. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I look forward to hearing a yes, I am journaling out of a bunch of you. All right. That's it. Meeting over.